Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today we're looking at a brand new study just released as a preprint that examines a popular question in muscle building research. Does making an exercise hardest at the stretch of the movement build more muscle than making it hardest at the top of the movement or in that shortened muscle length position? If an exercise is more difficult at the beginning of the rep or at the end of the rep, does it change how much muscle you grow? Now, you've probably heard the claims that length and partials are superior when it comes to training or exercises that challenge you in that stretched position produce more hypertrophy compared to exercises that don't. And there are recent studies which do suggest a muscle building advantage in specific muscle groups like the calves, hamstrings, and the triceps under certain conditions, specifically by manipulating exercise selection or the range of motion. But this new study took a different approach, one that removes a lot of the confounding variables in some of the early literature and they tested whether loading a muscle more in the lengthened position leads to more hypertrophy across four different muscle groups. And the results, they are not what you would expect. So today I'll go through what the researchers did, what they found, and what it actually means for your program design. So why does this study matter? Well, much of the prior research on range of motion and muscle length has compared two completely different exercises, like the dumbbell incline curl or the preacher curl, or the overhead tricep extensions and the cable press down. But those comparisons don't just change muscle length. They change exercise selection, range of motion, moment arms, resistance profiles, and even joint angles. So we can't actually isolate whether it's the muscle length that matters for growth or simply the exercise mechanics itself. So the present study eliminated those confounders by keeping the exercise identical, the range of motion identical, the tempo mostly identical, and the effort identical, all while changing only one thing, where the peak torque of that movement occurred at long muscle lengths or the short muscle length. And in my opinion, this is one of the cleanest tests of this question to date. So what was the purpose of the study? Well, the researchers wanted to determine whether training with a descending resistance profile, where the muscle is most challenged in the lengthened position, would produce more hypertrophy and strength than an ascending resistance profile, where the peak challenge happens in the shortened or squeezed portion of the lift. To do this, they examined this across four muscle groups, the posterior deltoid, the lateral deltoid, the pec major and the glute maximus, or high interest muscles for a typical physique training. Now their hypothesis was simple. Long length loading should produce more hypertrophy. So let's see how that held up. This study used a tightly controlled contralateral training design, meaning each participant trained both limbs with one sign assigned to the descending resistance profile and the other to an ascending profile. This allowed the researchers to control for individual differences in things like genetics, nutrition, recovery, and training history because each person essentially served as their own control. The researchers recruited 20 untrained adults between the ages of 19 and 30. The participants completed a 10 week training program performing two sessions per week. Each session included four exercises, a reverse fly, a chest fly, a multi-hip extension for the glutes, and a lateral raise, all performed on prime machines. These machines made it possible to shift the resistance curve so that one limb experienced the hardest part of the rep in the lengthened position, while the other limb experienced peak challenge in the shortened portion without altering the range of motion or their technique. Every exercise was performed four to five sets of eight to 12 repetitions, taking into momentary failure. Importantly, the researchers standardized technique, tempo, and range of motion across both limbs, and they replicated the same setup and seat positions each week to ensure consistency. The only variable that differed was whether the machine applied peak torque in the stretched or shortened region of the lift. Hypertrophy was measured using MRI with cross-sectional area taken at three regions of each muscle, the proximal, middle, and distal regions. For the glutes, a full volume measurement was collected. Strength was assessed using one rep maximum test before and after the training period. Now, before we dive into the results, if you're ready to train smarter, not harder, check out my evidence-based training programs. They're designed for all experience levels with unique muscle building focuses, built-in volume tracking and exercise demonstrations. And for just $12.99, you honestly can't go wrong. To download your next training program, visit my website, beer-body.com, or you can check out my fitness app, getbeafit.com, and start 
start your evidence-based trading program today. Now, let's get back to the video. So what did the authors find? All four muscles, the posterior deltoid, the lateral deltoid, the pec major, and glute maximus increased in size over the 10-week period. This was expected given that the participants were previously untrained and the program involved progressive, high-effort resistance training. However, the central finding was that the hypertrophy did not differ between the descending resistance profile and the ascending resistance profile. In every muscle examined and at every measured region along the muscle length, authors observed no differences between training with the torque bias at long muscle lengths or at short muscle lengths. Even the gluteal volume measurements showed no meaningful differences between conditions. When it comes to strength, strength improvements followed the same pattern. All exercises demonstrated significant increases in one rep maximum from pre to post testing, but there were no differences between the limbs trained with a descending versus ascending profiles. Both approaches produced similar strength gains over the 10 week intervention. Overall, the results demonstrated that when range of motion, effort and volume are matched, and when the only variable manipulated is where peak torque occurs, training at long muscle lengths does not produce greater hypertrophy or strength than training at short muscle lengths, at least in this group of untrained lifters. So what does this all mean? Well, the findings from this study challenge a really common belief in the fitness world, especially one pushed by a lot of online PhD influencers, that training a muscle with heavier loads in the stretch position is always better for growth. In this experiment, the researchers were able to isolate the effect of peak torque location by keeping every other training variable identical. The exercises were the same, the range of motion was the same, the tempo and effort were the same, and the only difference between limbs was whether peak talk occurred in that stretched region or the short region of each lift. Now, because of this high level of control, the comparison between long length and short length loading was arguably more direct than what we see in some previous research. Despite the hypothesis that lengthened bias loading would produce greater hypertrophy, the study did not observe any meaningful differences between the two conditions in any of the muscle groups measured. The posterior delt, the lateral delt, the pec major, and the glute maximus all grew to a similar degree under to both loading profiles. The results showed no systematic advantage for either torque bias. These findings suggest that at least in untrained individuals, the location of peak torque within an otherwise identical movement may not significantly influence muscle growth when total volume, intensity of effort, and range of motion are properly matched. It is possible, however, that the robust responsiveness of untrained lifters reduced the sensitivity of detecting a difference, but within the parameters of this study, both approaches were equally effective. Now, the strength outcomes reinforce this interpretation. Both loading profiles produce similar improvements in one repetition maximum strength, indicating the neuromuscular adaptations occurring over the 10-week period were not meaningfully affected by whether the muscle was most challenged in the stretched or shortened portion of the lift. That said, it's important to remain cautious when generalizing these results. This study examined untrained participants. It used a fixed set of exercises and implemented torque biasing throughout very specific machine configurations. So these results do not necessarily contradict earlier studies which show stretch biased hypertrophy in other contexts because many of those studies altered factors such as exercise selection, range of motion depth, or total mechanical tension. What this study does demonstrate is that when all other training variables are held constant, simply shifting peak torque towards the long or or short muscle length does not appear to meaningfully influence hypertrophy, at least in exercises examined in the present study. In other words, resistance profile alone, independent of the range of motion or exercise choice, may not be a strong driver of muscle growth in early training stages. Overall, these findings highlight that effective hypertrophy training can be achieved across a range of resistance profiles, and that practical considerations, such as comfort, available equipment, and exercise preference may matter more than whether an exercise is biased towards the stretched or shortened position. So what are my key takeaways? Well, when you hold all major training variables constant, exercise selection, range of motion, effort, volume, and tempo, the simple act of shifting peak torque towards the longer or shorter length of the muscle does not appear to meaningfully influence hypertrophy or strength in untrained individuals. Both loading profiles produced similar muscle growth across the delts, pecs, and glutes, 
and both improved strength to the same degree. This suggests that the broader principle of hypertrophy, things like training close to failure, using sufficient volume, and maintaining consistent technique may carry far more weight than where the peak tension occurs in the stretch or the squeeze portion of a lift. It also means that many exercises with different resistance profiles may be more interchangeable than commonly believed, at least early in a training career. For most people, choosing exercises that feel stable, comfortable, and allow you to train hard through a full range of motion is likely far more important than chasing a specific torque curve. Now, if you want more research-based breakdowns just like this, especially studies that dive into the nuanced topics like resistance profiles, range of motion, and hypertrophy mechanisms, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share this with a lifting buddy. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.